Anyone have any questions? I don't know, uh, Gabe, honestly, if I could summarize it in the time that we have left. I think there's um, lessons almost per possession, per player, whoever was in. And maybe once I watch the tape, obviously, I can see the bench decorum. But there's lessons throughout uh, in every possible way. And regardless of opponent or um, who's playing, relative to where we're at and where we need to work to get to, every situation is an opportunity to learn for sure. When uh, through their stretch run there at the end of the uh, first half, when mm. they, I think it was 29 to five to end it out, yeah. turnovers really weren't a huge issue as they have been in the past. What did you kind of see? Was it mostly rebounding? Yeah, um, I think we won the first eight, uh, four-minute media. I think we won the second four-minute media. And then in that third one, I think we scored two points. I tried to call, use the first time out, I think, when it was getting away from us a little bit in that run, and then used a second time out. The, the rest of that half, the, the remaining, uh, whatever that was, 11 and a half minutes is that gap. That's a large gap. Um, when they just whipped us. Uh, they whipped us from start to finish, but we had uh, at halftime zero assists and 10 turnovers. So um, you, you want to try to have maybe good teams maybe have 11 turnovers a game. Teams that play slow, maybe a little less. For sure need to have more than zero assists. And then they had 11 offensive rebounds. So some of the things that we've been talking about thus far, um, were, were apparent for sure in that stretch. Maybe not at the rate, but still too high of a rate relative to time score and momentum of what was going on. You talk a lot about how you have guys who can play the point, but you don't necessarily have a point guard yet. Is this a game that kind of uh, put that into the spotlight a little bit more? Sure, I think, I think, uh, I think Dre's done really good um, in his second game starting at maybe a, what is not completely his natural position. I thought in many respects he helped us win on Monday. Um, I, I love uh, their kid, uh, number four, that I think he's a graduate transfer. Really good player. Uh, all of them are very good players. But that's uh, for Dre to be able to have that experience in his third college game, that's, that's uh, a lot to learn from. Mitchell led you in points tonight overall. Um, Zach's a favorite coach. Um, overall, yeah, let me find you. <laughs> well, they're probably on the back page. Um, He's on the bottom left. Second. Anyways, man, you combed your hair tonight, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. It was, it was Gonzaga. It's big. It's uh, that's what uh, we appreciate everybody that spent their money and their time and their effort after my diatribe uh, to helped the ambiance and environment tonight. I thought it was great. Um, really thankful, appreciative uh, for the Aggies responding. Thank you for those of you that weren't planning to come but are here for the game tomorrow. We, we're, we're thankful. I'm glad you showed it. Have you been, did you come to Monroe and Northwestern? I did not. <laughs> well, then you're kind of like some of the people that showed up tonight. <laughs> I've got a morning show, got to get up for it. Thank you. Uh, but uh, with that being said, Coach, with Chuck leading you in minutes tonight, I mean, just overall, I'm sure there's, there's positives and negatives from the performance, but overall, what do you think about his play? I love the intent of Chuck's heart. Um, regardless of how good a player he is, I just respect um, who he is as a person. I respect that he's completely bought into what we've asked him to do. Uh, he is easily the most vocal person in our program. He cares for the right reasons, not for selfish reasons. He was 0 of 6, I think, in uh, Monday night's game with three turnovers and played uh, very limited minutes in the second half and then uh, spent the next several hours in the practice gym working, real work. And I just respect that. 
And um, I thought tonight, I mean, I don't know if having two assists is uh, good enough as a primary ball handler, but he was trying. He was trying to create shots and play for others. I just, I just love who he is as a kid. That's right. Uh, I, I think that's uh, evident. That's a that's a, a stat that's for sure. Um, maybe shows that the intent of what he's trying to do is right. Um, he's been first to the floor. I don't know how many tonight, but he leads our team in charges distinctly. He leads our team in first to the floor, and the practice stats that we keep. Um, he's miles and miles ahead of everybody. Almost to the point that if you added the other eight guys that are on the roster that are playing up, they don't have better numbers than Chuck. And a lot of those practice stats are not necessarily box score stats. I just, um, I really respect that he is trying to do right and is frustrated for the right reasons when he's not able to execute what we're asking him to do. And that he's aware that he's when he doesn't execute, that he he's wanting to do it for us. He's not necessarily wanting to do it for himself. I certainly know it's still early in the, the season and the process of getting everything installed, but facing number 18 in the nation, how do you feel like uh, this, this was a benchmark for your team? How do you feel like it, you measured up? Yeah, um, not trying to be a prophet. I anticipated what we saw. Uh, I think they're really good, incredibly well coached. Um, an elite level roster relative to their style of play and how they want to play. Um, not that I want to lose, but I think uh, having this rep this early at home with the crowd that we had, um, it's liberating is what I told the team. Because now there's evidence in, like you mentioned earlier and Gabe mentioned, there's uh, piles and piles of evidence that straying maybe towards what we're not asking you to do, it won't work. Um, and sometimes you can cover that up a little better in a guarantee game, or it'll turn into a game against Louisiana Monroe. And then when you play a team like this tonight, it, it reveals itself faster, more violently, um, more like what in the world is going on. And so, like I told the team, that's liberating because now um, if, if that doesn't help change your thoughts internally on how we're going about things, then nothing will. And I think that may end up being the best thing. Buzz, um, just back to the, the way the game came out, is, is there some things that you saw or, or not that you said, you know, I, I feel good about that? And yes, sir. Uh, in the in the second half, I think the last time out, you can I guess we could look it up, but um, the last time out that was used at that moment in the second half, maybe let's say it was the four minute mark. In the first sixteen minutes of the second half, they outscored us by two, and uh, maybe the guys that were playing were somewhat out of position as far as how we had kind of mixed them together. Um, maybe on the scouting report it wasn't the guys that you thought would play as many minutes for Texas A&M. Maybe uh, it's human nature for Gonzaga, who had won from start to finish other than the first two timeouts in the, sec in the first half. Um, they, they're trying to do what we're asking. And to only be down two, and I understand all of the justification for why, that's encouraging. Uh, we ended up losing by nine which speaks to who played the last four minutes of the game. And so uh, whether they're old, young, uh, good, need to get better, uh, we've got to figure out a mix. And typically speaking, in what we're about to go through, the mix is going to be whoever is trying to do exactly what we're asking them to do. Got time for a couple more. Does the assist to turnover ratio bother you more or the rebound and success of tonight? I thought, Gabe, that the intent of what we were doing in the first half uh, was not 
unselfish. Um, zero assists and 10 turnovers. I would have to look it up, but uh, through 410 games of my career as a head coach, I don't remember that stat ever being that prominent. Um, and I understand not every night um, maybe a fan's lens would be, well, we just weren't making shots. Sometimes it has to do with the types of shots that you shoot. Um, against uh, Northwestern, we only took how we define bad shots. We only took two bad shots. Against Monroe, uh, we took seven bad shots. Um, you, you want the bad shot percentage to be less than 10% of your total field goal attempts. Tonight, we took 17 bad shots in how we define it. 17 of our shots, and we shot 56. 17 of them, that was 30% of our shots, were what we define as bad. And that was the highest number that we've had distinctly. And so uh, maybe the environment, maybe the opponent, um, it proved that splintering and shooting some of those shots, it doesn't work. And uh, if you're shooting bad shots, typically speaking, you're not going to get it. It's not going to be an assisted basket. The uh, going into tonight, we had made zero percent of our bad shots. Tonight, we made one. So uh, two and seven, twenty. We've taken twenty-six bad shots so far this season, and we've made one. Somebody made one tonight. We were one of seventeen. So, anything else, Coach? Let's go. Uh, like, yes, sir. Sorry. One, one You're right. um, when Nebo had that late block there on the on the sideline, obviously pretty excited about that. I think that kind of energized the crowd. And I know you. Talked yeah, it was kind of scrambled eggs before it got to a block shot. Was that at half court? Uh, Ball was loose and it just kept. No, this, I think, yeah, yeah. I know it's because it was when the guy did like the pump fake like twice and then. So you think it's possession I'm talking about or a different no, one? No, it is. I think it is because they were on the fast break. Yeah, just just the electricity, I guess, that he's able to provide for the team. I mean, he's been a guy that is now getting I, I, I've enjoyed coaching him. Uh, I mentioned to uh, the uh, the SEC TV guys today, they, they ask a question about Nebo. Um, he has only practiced – uh, seven times now. So obviously he watched everything leading up to that. And he has um, absorbed what he watched way better uh, than I anticipated. Um, he's done a really good job, much better even uh, at absorbing that information than when we were at Costa Rica. Obviously, uh, competition's different, but we only played three games. I felt like I'm going to have to do a better job teaching him and go a little slower. Um, that's how I felt after our return. And then obviously he had missed from the last Sunday in September until whatever ended up being the, the first Sunday in November or close. He's done a really good job. And uh, I think he'll continue to improve. Athletically, he can make plays that you want to stand up and cheer for, for sure. Are you excited? It, I think it'll help us. I think it'll help us. I think we'll have to be at our absolute best uh, to beat Scott on Wednesday. Uh, Scott was the first player I ever signed as a college coach, and uh, he's my favorite human being in the world. Um, I'm a year and a half older than Scott, and I remember it uh, distinctly. His mom, his dad, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, and then the first point guard I ever signed as a head coach is his top assistant coach. And uh, so we'll have to be at our absolute best because Scott literally knows every single thing that we do. And he was a two-time academic All-American at UTA. You know how hard that is to do. Um, we'll have to be distinctly better than we have been through three games to have a chance to win on Wednesday. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, yes, sir.